So this here is an old Otis black button call station that has this really interesting floor indicator. So this was the older rotodial style indicator. However, we're missing the entire back portion of this. So in this project, we're going to turn this plate and this little dial into a fully working call station that will allow us to use the buttons to simply turn the dial to a different floor. So the dial has basement and then one through five, and then obviously the way it would work, the arrow points to the floor and as the car moves up and down, the little dial turns and it points to a different floor. As for the buttons, they're just your basic black button. So they have the little screw on the back and then the cap comes off and then here's where it attaches to the button. So the glass portion of the indicator is held in with these little metal tabs and some of them are attached so we won't be able to remove this very easily. So that's pretty simple. And then for the dial itself, there's the plastic on top and it has this metal piece on the bottom. So I'm not totally sure what this would connect to in order to make it spin, but we're gonna come up with our own method to turn this piece. So as we're making this a fully working call station, we're gonna need some sort of electronics, some sort of guts on the back. So what I'm thinking, we'll build a wooden frame. So I've got some pieces cut already. So this will form a wooden frame and this will sit on top like this. And then underneath, I have pulled some of these old contacts off one of my rotodial buttons. These are, this is the rotodial that kind of got destroyed. So I've got some extra contacts. I'm thinking we'll slide these under here and then we'll use this little motor. Now this is a stepper motor and we can use a microcontroller to run this. So I'll 3D print some sort of adapter that will let us connect this dial to the stepper motor and I'll mount this under here. I'll line it up and mount that. And then on the end of the stepper motor, we need a controller. So I'll have this stepper motor controller. So we'll mount that somewhere. And then to run the stepper motor, I've got this small little microcontroller. So we'll program this. So I'll make it we're pushing one of the up or down buttons. We'll rotate the dial one floor number. So looking at the dial here, it appears that the numbers are for the most part evenly spaced, except for number four. It looks like number four is to the side a little bit. So we'll have to see how that ends up working with the coding. Looks like four might just be a little bit off with the code, but we'll see if I can maybe work something in to fix that. But this is the idea that I have to make this work. And then at the very end, I'll be using this little power supply. So five volt power supply to run it all, and it'll plug into the wall and be, be nice and simple. So I have finished building this piece and you can see where all the electronics are put in here and there's the rotor dial and the buttons work. So at this point, I just gotta program it. So I got all the code written here and this thing is now fully working. And what's kind of cool is the 
plug on the microcontroller here is just a USB, so you could actually use a phone charger to power this as well, as well as a five volt plug that I have down here. So you have some options for powering it. And it's ready to go and it's working. So let's take this back in the workshop and I'll show you what it can do. So here we are back in the workshop and you can see here, now I am powering this with my AC adapter and this is how we'll use it in the museum. So you have B through five. If you push down, you see nothing happens because it's at the bottom. But if I press up, you see the rotor dial turns to one. Push up again, goes up yet another floor. And if you hold it down, it will continue going all the way up to five. Once it reaches the top, You'll see, can't go up anymore because you're at the top. And same idea going back down. You can hold the button down and it will go all the way down. Now, at any time you let go, it will go to the floor that is in between. So you see here it goes to three. It's a little bit off here, but that's because the these numbers are not perfectly aligned. Another feature that I added into this is, let's say, here it is at two. You decide to unplug the rotor dial. So now... You see here, it doesn't turn at all. Now if I plug it back in, and I start going down, you'll see it continues off where it was. That's because there's a memory on this and it remembers every floor that it goes to. So you can plug it back in, and you don't have to worry about it being out of sync. If it does get out of sync, you can just manually turn the dial in the back and get it adjusted to how you want it. And as for inside the circuitry, there's not really a whole lot to see. You can see the uh, motor controller up there kind of flashing whenever it moves. But there's not really a whole lot to see behind here. It's just a few red lights. So I'm super happy with the way that this project came out. And this literally went from a just a plate and a little dial to a fully working panel that is interactive. And I think this is really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this project turn into what it is now with a fully working roto dial. And this will be on display in the Elevator Museum. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.